ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. We made it to Friday, uh, Future Friday. Uh, Friday is the day that we uh, talk about leadership. So if you are not a leader or you want to be a leader, if you're not a leader or you don't want to be a leader, you don't want to listen to this program because this program is about leadership and people who want to make a difference by giving leadership to their life and perhaps to their very own little starship enterprise. So this is for leaders. And I had a wonderful example of leadership this morning, just as the title describes. I was going around the lake on my morning walk, and there were about well, maybe well over a hundred geese in the lake. And all of a sudden, one of them decided to go, and off he or she went, and the rest followed. And they quickly got into their V, and then they accelerated, made the turn, and they were off, headed south. And the question came to me is, how in the world was that done? Who decided? How was it decided among these 150, 200 geese, which one would get to go first and be the leader? Well, there's a couple of things we need to know about leadership uh, that perhaps we can even learn from the animals, and perhaps a, a little bit of a rant on that. And then, again, if you want to be a leader, you're going to have to learn how to be a sleeper. If you want to be a leader, you're going to have to learn to be a sleeper. That's the program for today. It's not too long, but it'll be, uh, I believe, interesting and helpful and useful and get your weekend off to a good start. And that program begins right now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Here we are. Now, I'm going to tell you a joke that uh, obviously has a Maybe some political implications, but it's only because of the context. And I heard this while I was out in cowboy land back in my good uh, other home of Arizona. I'm from Carolina and Arizona, so I tell people I'm now from Carizona. And, of course, uh, from Minnesota at some time. And occasionally I even go back there. And I might actually be paying some visits to some new situations in what I call what could be the startup kingdom, the startup spirit kingdom of uh, the startup nation, which might be Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's right. A town that is breeding and leading and uh, sustaining leaders. All kinds of things. Well, here's the story from cowboy country. Two cowboys are leaning up against the corral, and the one simply says this, You know what? I know that there's a, a one difference between uh, humans and animals. There really is a significant difference between humans and animals. And the other cowboy looks at him and says, Okay, yeah, but, well, what is it? He said, the thing I do know is that no animal ever chooses the dumbest one to be the leader of the herd. <laughs> no animal ever chooses the dumbest one to be the leader of the herd, or the pack, <laughs> or whatever else they call. And uh, unfortunately, that does make a bit of a political comment, but it's actually a general comment. The state of leadership, at least in my part of the world and in most of the world, is abysmal. They are not men and women of quality. They are not women of men and women of character. They are not competent. They uh, have very little, if any, spiritual insight. They have a lack of history. And as a result, right now, we are entering a recession. It seems the news today is, get ready, times are going to be tough, and when we most need leadership, in the midst of crisis times, we have very little real leader. Now we have leaders, but uh, they're not learners, and they're not sleepers, 
and they are none of the things that usually go into great leadership. And this is not just a political statement. Uh, our state of education, same thing is true there, particularly higher education, um, corporations. In fact, the only real place that you will begin to find some significantly good leadership is in the entrepreneurial sector. And I have to be uh, very honest, as a man of faith, I also have found that there is a lack of good leadership even in the spiritual or church dimension. It just isn't there anymore. I don't know what to do about it. I would like to be able to help people achieve more in terms of their own personal greatness and personal development. Uh, unfortunately, many people just aren't listening to the voice of leadership anymore. And so that's the mess we are in. And I don't particularly have an answer to it, but I do have some specific answers, but uh, that's what this program will be about throughout uh, the days ahead of us. Now, please, please keep in mind what we're trying to do is, first of all, I want to encourage you, if you want to be a leader, you have to do what I'm doing. If you don't learn how to become a master of self-expression, if you don't know how to speak and present and perform and use the media in a powerful and effective way today, you will not be able to be the leader that you could be and perhaps the leader that you must be. And right now, I can bring to mind many, many leaders who I know of who are doing okay, kinda. They are not reaching anywhere near their full potentiality, and they are not doing the things that they could do if they would just get off the dime and start to do some things differently. I could name them. You wouldn't know them, but I will not embarrass them. But uh, I know of them. And so do you. So, that's the state we're in. And the only thing I can say of vitality and verity is in terms of the world that you can create for you and your family and maybe for the small community of people that you have some leadership and influence in, you can make the difference. You can create a cell of excellence. It will not be large. It will not be substantial right now. But until we renew ourselves by people like you, people like me, uh, having greater courage, greater commitment, greater desire to have the right kind of skills and the skills that will help you, and uh, the attitudes, as I say, the principles, the practices, and the performances that are necessary to be great leaders, even good leaders. The principles, the moral and spiritual principles, the practices, the behavior, the way they do what they do, and the performances. And that is how they lead people, how they persuade and influence people. We need people who are serious about doing that. And they're learning the arts of that and in particularly with what I call the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, I'm absolutely committed to the point that whether you want to take him in his fullness as who he is, fine, you should. But even by looking at his style, his substance, his way to school, the way he built an organization, you can learn a great deal about how life and business can and should work because he knew <laughs> he had all of the knowledge he needed and he had all of the capability that he needed and all the power that he needed to do that he gave it up in one aspect is that in effect he took on a form like you so he would suffer the limitations you have but he would also show the example of what you could be, which is what he came to do, to 
teach us how to be fully alive forever. So there we are at 10 minutes, and now I'm going to finish up by telling you that leaders are sleepers. We'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Remember, uh, at least uh, the new year that I'm celebrating starts on Monday with the uh, Rosh Hashanah holiday and then the 10 days of awe. And uh, we're going to try and do uh, some studies in awesomeness, studies in awesomeness uh, in the following week. However, I want you to do this. In the year ahead of you, learn how to sleep. I've taken that challenge seriously, and um, it has been remarkable in what it can do for me. And if you listen to the program yesterday, I challenge you. Now, here's where we go. (laughs) Even today, uh, here it goes. A bad sleep turns your immune system against you. Okay, bad sleep turns your immune system against you. Let me just read you some of the things I'm aware of. And uh, if you want to know more, I will give full attribution by you turning them to me. Bad sleep turns your immune system against you. Lack of sleep is known to lower your immune defenses and lead to a higher risk for all sorts of diseases in the near term and over time. New research offers some insight as to why. Sleep that's too short or fragmented during the night actually alters the DNA inside stem cells that create your body's white blood cells key to the immune system. As a result, the stem cells kick out too many white blood cells, flooding the body and causing an overreaction of the immune system that can trigger inflammation, which can turn into heart disease and other inflammatory disorders. Catch-up sleep, already deemed of dubious value, does not seem to rectify the problem. Here we go. In effect, they are discovering that sleep the right amount of sleep, the enough sleep, and unfortunately, the lack of sleep has far greater impact not only on our life and our business and life performance than we've ever thought possible. Recently, from the Epic Times, there was a wonderful article which essentially said this, brain basics, understanding sleep, and This is far more information than you ever need, but I can show you and provide you the research and the link to it. But it will give you all of the scientific basic understandings that uh, you need to have in your life if you want to better understand how your sleep systems work and how it affects your brain. Then there are also the uh, 10-step guides to better sleep. And we can go through those, the things that you need to know to get better sleep. And there are a number of videos. And even what I talked about yesterday is that there is a virtual theology of sleep which demonstrates that even in the theology, in the theos of God, We find all kinds of instructions and admonitions about the power of doing sleep right. This is radio, and I can't show them all to you, and I don't want to show them to you. I just want you to say, this weekend, I'm going to do a little bit, as my wife did yesterday. She actually had, you've heard of it, a sleep study which is an attempt to evaluate the quality of her sleep and how she can take a action. She has CPAP 
apnea problems, and so she has to continually try to improve the quality of her sleep. And so you need to take that seriously. And if you want to uh, email me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com, it will be my privilege and my pleasure to actually send you the links to some of these articles and to some of the YouTube videos that are there. And as a result of that, you can look it up, check the experts, or at least the men and women who have a reputation for being experts, and uh, perhaps find out what you need to know and how you can do it so that in uh, 2023, <laughs> you will be one of the... Uh, people who will sleep better through what might be a difficult year. At least you'll be a better leader and a better sleeper in that year. So again, reach out to me, stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. Yeah, if you happen to know how the geese choose their leader, please let me know. And of course, the cowboys are right. As far as we know, the animals don't choose the dumbest one to be the leader of the pack or the leader of the herd. All the best and blessings to you. Learn how to sleep. Learn how to pray. Learn how to perform at your best. And we would like to help you do that. We we can help you do that. Again, stanhouston at gmail.com. Best and blessings to you. May the weekend go well for you. Time for rest, reflection, relaxation, and worship. All four. Do all four, and it will be a good weekend. Take care, and bye for now.